very much uh, family, uh, my eternal word. Um, family, we thank you very much for the opportunity to once again come to you here. Um, today, I am very honored to have um, a special guest in our midst this evening. Uh, she is a woman of God that I've really gotten to know. Um, she's a woman that I love so much. She is my better half, my wife, um, Akusia Oponi. Mm -hmm. And um, today we're bringing you a special edition of uh, Eternal Word. We usually have it on Saturday mornings, but um, the reason why I had to do this with her because of our schedule and everything. Um, we have, um, if you can hear us on Facebook, um, I think we have a technical difficulty here. If you can hear us on Facebook, I'd like you to give me the thumbs up. Um, this session today will, is a very special session and I believe lives will be changed, lives will be transformed. Um, uh, this is a woman of God that I have learned to know and learned to do, uh, work with her. Learned to work with her. Um, as I said, she is no other but than my wife. Um, and today we have a very, very important and very interesting topic that we would like to talk about. And it's the question of issue of uh, submission. Um, I've had a lot of, um, it's come up in, in several conversations and I've received uh, Questions. People have been sending me questions about that, and I believe there is no other one that I could um, call on to talk about this than her. Um, and very soon, I'll be take I'll, I'll have her take over from me. But um, I want to make sure that we are all set and ready to receive her. If you can hear me loud and clear, please uh, give me the thumbs up on Facebook on Periscope. Periscope, give me the hearts on Periscope and uh, TV Africa Network, uh, our family there, we, God, we should bless every single one of you. Um, the topic today, as I said, is a very sensitive topic um, because the word has been abused and this uh, and has been <laughs> misused and been abused so many times and um, most people are not comfortable to hear or to address it. Um, I mean, what do you say? <laughs> Hi, um, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Akusua Puni, uh, Ernest's wife of uh, six, five, six years. Oh, five years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a pleasure and honor to join you uh, to discuss this uh, topic with yeah. you. Mm -hmm. um, like you were saying, uh, the word submission in in marriage has been a bit misinterpreted in in our generation um, there I know a lot of youth that don't want anything to do with the word um, but when Paul addressed it in Ephesians I don't think he meant it for women to feel inferior or for men to feel as though women are inferior to them and so the little knowledge that I have of, of it and the revelation that the Holy Spirit gave me through studying um, before I married my husband I was really I developed a serious relationship with God for about a year before he came into my life and these are things that um, I had to study because I grew up in that feminist um, era and I also saw the word as a very bad word and I didn't want anything to do with it but it is essential for marriage especially if you want to have a successful marriage it is essential that you come to an understanding of what the word truly means um, when you read Ephesians 522 uh, give me a moment here uh, Paul says to the church uh, wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the house, of the, the head of the wife, sorry, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, 
so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything now once i came up with the i did a research to the word you know, submission what does that word mean to submission so i took it apart a little bit um i studied english as a major in, in college and i took it apart and i decided decided to uh, break it down to have an understanding of it and the holy spirit led me to do this which is submission um submission and sub like the word submarine it's something that's underwater and submission so it's sub so it's under mission that's how i saw it um and so when you say submit to your own husbands it has to do with a mission a purpose not just you wake up and then you just submit to anybody or to your husband with no regard to um, a purpose and that is why it's also very important that you marry for purpose you can't marry for money for sex for um, whatever the reasons may be you have to have a purpose there has to be something that draw you to the person that makes you want to spend the rest of your life with this person um, once you marry uh, you take on the name of the man now this is something that is practiced across board uh, christians do it atheists do it um, people that are christians that don't practice christianity do it <laughs> uh, muslims do it everybody does it once you marry you take the name of your husband and i saw it as you becoming part of a company like i married i had my last name was bronya now it's oponi so i am now a representative of his brand i am ernest uh, kusia oponi or ernest oponi's wife i am part of his brand i didn't take his name he didn't take my name sorry i took his name so in a sense he is a brand and i have become part of it so in a sense when you see it as such there has to be a mission just as every company every brand has a vision that they are driving at there has to be a vision there has to be something that draws you to this person that makes you want to spend the because everybody have a dream everybody have something that they want to do with their lives everybody wants to find that fulfillment and so when you decide to make this decision to pick somebody it has to be somebody that you know can help you drive to that purpose you know uh we were discussing what missions could be some could just be that they just want to have kids and raise them that's a mission some could be that they want to do the work of god some could be that they want to be do philanthropy but whatever it is something drew you to the man and made you want to take on his last name become part of him so you have to marry for a purpose um and it's very very important so once you marry for that purpose now and i see it as a mission so you go under that mission um the bible says that the husband is the head of the wife when he says the husband is the head of the wife what is head somebody will say you have a good head on in your shoulders it means you have a good brain you have a good thinking you have uh, 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 the head of the house meaning he is the spearhead of 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 the of the vision the the one that carries the vision um, and so it's very very important that you see it as such and where is our part as wives well i can for one say that when i met my husband i was we were both in prayer meetings mm. and i was very much on fire for god um, he was as well I saw the way he loved God, how he was thirsty for him, how he he you know in conversations with him, I can see that this one wants to do something for the work of God. And that's the same feeling that I had. I wanted to do the work of God. I wanted to build up, you know, Christians, build up anybody that will come across because God has sent us to the world and we share that vision together. And so when I decided to marry him it was not a difficult thing because we have a mission 
there's something that drove us together the mm. purpose for which we God w- w- put us together mm. and then I had a dream and I realized that his destiny and my destiny are connected because when we communicated we realized that we shared the same vision and that vision was to to do the work of God that's the first and foremost mm. you know so now I submit under the mission I go under the mission you know what does that mean does that mean that he he takes the upper lead in everything no it does not it means that he is the vision carrier he spearheads it and I support it I help it go just as you have a company the CEO and then you have let's say managing director mm. somebody running the the mm. company operations. to make sure operations yeah, yeah, yeah. somebody who is mm. in charge of, of operations you know they they are not necessarily uh, uh, inferior to the CEO they are the ones who are helping the company run yeah. so i believe when paul said wives submit to your own husbands i believe that that's what he meant mm. now um when you when you when you see it as such then it becomes easier for yeah. you to submit to to the man right. because there's something there there's a purpose for which you are put together um it, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you are in charge of everything yeah. it, it it means that you both sit together you analyze the best qualities that you both can bring to the table mm-hmm. like me my husband he tries to cook but he's not so good at it um he's good with money managing money um i'm good thinking on my feet uh when something is an emergency i he will call on me to f- ask an idea what should do to he's the type of person that's very much laid back so we analyzed our qualities yeah. and then we put them to use cool. the best yeah. If my husband was to say a better cook than me and took better care of the kids and maybe I did well in our office then there is no uh uh, uh I would say there's no pessimism or there's no uh, uh uh bad energy around the idea that he will stay home and watch the kids yeah, yeah. while I do the office work mm. because at the end of the day that we are trying to fulfill, fulfill like, purpose, your purpose and the mission something that will drive us to the goal mm-hmm. so when paul says submit to your wives uh, wives submit to your husbands i strongly believe that that's what he meant mm-hmm. i don't believe that he meant that women are weak mm-hmm. that you should abuse them that you the, the man has the final say mm-hmm. i don't believe that that's what it's all that women you should stay home and cook all the time mm-hmm. My husband is a great help. He he me I wash the dishes by hands. He arranges them in the dishwasher and is gone. Um he helps me clean the house, you know, cuz we are both mission focused. It is important. That's why I keep hinting on the fact that it's important that you marry for a mission. Right. And the other thing um in the same verse Paul was also admonishing the men. He said I think he said men love your well, wives. wives first then we'll you also emphasize that women well, should no. submit is um, is is very hard for for anybody to submit to someone that they do not that they feel they are not loved by them you know so and that is why i believe that paul put that um emphasis on the men learning to love their wives and um before he talked about women submitting Um I I believe if if there is anybody out there that is in a relationship or is married to any any man or anything and, and they feel the man does not love them they are they are insecure in the relationship it, it becomes hard for that person to submit mm-hmm. and and that is and, and people not willing to submit I believe it's a defensive mechanism because um they they don't want to bring themselves into a place where they are not comfortable where they have no control Um exactly. love the bible says cast away perfect love cast away all fears you know and when people are threatened and they feel um they are insecure and there is fear around them the first thing for them to do is to rebel 
to to oppose whatever is mm-hmm. there and and to and to to make sure that they are in a place where they are secure and, and, and safe. Yeah. Um, I think it's true because mm-hmm. if you you would only feel not in control if you uh, you don't know which part you're playing right. in, in in the role of the marriage. Mm-hmm. That's why I keep hinting that it's very important that you marry somebody who you share the same purpose and goals with. Right. Um, when and in that way, the person becomes a, we are helpers to right. our husbands. Mm-hmm. You know, um, let, in my house. I'm literally the head of the house, simply be, and not that because I'm, I'm said that to be bossy, but I run things better in the house more than he can. I have found my purpose. He respects that about me. He see that it's not easy because that's something that he has. He's not so strong on, and so. The fear, I believe, will come in when there is no purpose. There's no, um, uh, there's no freedom for the woman to express the giftings and the talents that God has given her. Okay. Because everybody want to feel important. Mm-hmm. And so if every day you, you come home and you're like, you don't do this well, I'll do this, you didn't cook right, I don't want this food, you do this, become authoritarian. Mm -hmm. That's not what Paul was describing when he said, submit wives, that uh, make sure the house is clean. I heard somewhere that um, that's the wife's duty is to cook. Mm -hmm. You must always cook, you must always clean, and you must always. And no woman wants to leave her house dirty, no. But it's not a woman's job to cook, to clean too. It is something that if the woman is best at doing, you understand, it's a communication between the two couples, the husband and the wife, and they realize, well, honey, we we want to wake up today, we want to save a thousand dollars every day. That's the mission. Mm-hmm. You set a goal this year, we want to save a thousand dollars every month. Right. Um, so what, how can we go can about we go it? About it? Yeah. Then, go, well, you are a better cook than I. Mm-hmm. So we don't have to bend the food. You cook. It's partnership. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have anything to do with somebody being weaker and stronger. Mm-hmm. Because in some sense, we women, we are even more, uh, we have more stronger qualities, I would say, than men. Not that I want to take away men's position that God has given them of course when it comes to emotional wise but when it comes to like let's say multitasking multitasking we are managing things in general Mm -hmm. we are so great at those things and so it's not always about you the man being in control Um, if there's any youth out there marriage I don't know you know and I speak to a lot of youth and they're like well the type of marriage I see, I, that's not what I want, mm-hmm. you know. And I was like, well, how do you see this? And they're like, well, you know, me, I'm, I'm gonna work. A lot of the young adults yeah, are yeah. I'm gonna get a job. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna work. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not gonna stay home mm-hmm. and and clean. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna. And I was like, that's great, but this is a conversation you have to have with your husband. Right. And these millennials, the men are so open-minded mm-hmm. the boys the young men and I'm like if your husband is good at cleaning mm-hmm. if your husband is good at cooking mm-hmm. then you can both share the duties to keep you going right. because at the end you are working towards a goal right but one thing that you don't also want to do as a wife is that you don't want to make it seem like you are in charge when men are you you know you have to also appreciate them for allowing you to exercise your not that i'm saying that marriage is um uh, like on whereby the man controls everything no that's i defeat that but you have to appreciate the man you understand and you have to appreciate each other you appreciate this person you are you always tell my husband that when we got to our fourth year in marriage something that the holy spirit told me was that you need to recognize each other's sacrifices. Mm-hmm. And that was so powerful when he said that. And I realized that we didn't. I, he took 
for me to always do things and I took for him to always do things and they were not so easy. So you have to recognize each other's sacrifices. You have to recognize each other's talents and let them know. But that is the job of the wife, to submit under a mission. It's very important to submit under a mission. And uh, yeah, as you were, you were saying, you talked about um, marriage being a partnership. Mm -hmm. I believe so, so true. Um, uh, it's a partnership, and it's, it's a partnership not that is not 50-50. It's a partnership. It's the only partnership that you give 100% mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. um, I hear people say, okay, marriage is a, par it's a partnership, and I give 50%, you also give 50%. 50%. No. No. You go into marriage with with the idea of giving fifty percent, you will you will fail. You are not you are not there yet. I'll tell you, you are not there yet. Um, marriage is a hundred percent commitment, a hundred percent sacrifice. It, it takes sacrifice, um, and and it's a partnership that requires a hundred percent of you. Um, so. Um, I wish anybody out there, as you made mention, the millennials. Um, I, I speak with young men and, and some of the young women out there. They are purpose-driven. They they are driven by causes. They are driven by visions. They are driven by missions, and yeah. and they want to they want to give so their all. They want to give their all. They want to go out there and rescue somebody that that is not that does not have anything. They want to go out there and help people that are in need, and they want to start something from scratch. They you know, and, and those are great things, but that does not mean that when you get married, you cannot fulfill those goals, mm -hmm. you know. And, right. and for that reason, most of them don't want to go into marriage because they believe that marriage is going to restrict them, right. you know. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's all about the person that you're going to get into that relationship. You have to understand each other's goals. Communicate, wanna, really. Yeah, communication, Set understand goals. each other's goals. You want to understand uh, what each other stands for. And um, you want to know where where each other is coming from, and I believe with that in mind, um, the sky will be the limit. Uh, the Bible says that one will chase a thousand, two will chase a ten thousand, mm -hmm. and and with two you can do more than one person can do. Right. Uh, my wife has been a great help to me personally, and I couldn't have gone this far and done anything without her. There's a lot that I learned. I have to undo all the things that I I knew. And, and <laughs> All the things that I knew about marriage, all the things that I, I thought marriage was about, and, and uh, reprogram myself. Sometimes for you to be successful in, in marriage, for you to be successful in your next relationship, you want to give your time, yourself time to online, to delete all the stuff that you have, the junk you have on all the hard drive, just delete every single one of them. Mm -hmm. And reload yourself with good, yeah. good stuff. You know, uh, reload yourself with good stuff. Uh, find time to to really take care of yourself as a person. Um, I believe um, if you are not great as a single person, um, it, it will also reflect in your marriage because your weaknesses are going to show up. If you think those things are not mm -hmm. are not an issue, those those things will crop up in in that relationship, yeah. and that's why why when you are single that is the best time of your life i tell people that are single i tell them man this is the best time of your life this is a time for you to correct some of the things and and build yourself up and and and, and make yourself the best person that that mm -hmm. you want to be we want to become and we want to be um is there... um to just to even if you when you do that marriage is something it's like having kids you can never prepare enough for it that's once you go in it, then, you know, um, you really begin to, when kids come in, um, it ties into the second thing that I wanted to discuss, which is a mission and the purpose filled marriage overrides emotions. Now, in marriage, emotions will change. You won't always feel, you know, the, the, um, the, um, infatuation and the, the butterflies, the butterflies in the stomach the... when you see him or see her. Uh, emotions will change. It will fluctuate. Sometimes you don't really want to be around this person. Then there are times you do. And the reason why being in a purpose field, a mission, a marriage that is based on a mission, is that the mission will carry you through. And we don't want to forget this aspect, this personality, which is the Holy Spirit. He is the one that will drive you. Um, 
uh, my husband and I, we love God. Um, we do our best to uh, grow in Christ, and we we allow. We both personally have personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. Now, when he does something that I don't like, or we get into an argument, I'll send somewhere. The Holy Spirit will communicate with me. Then you'll communicate with him. The Holy Spirit is very important in marriages, especially Christian marriages, um, and so. He will help you carry that mission when you and him are not, uh, I would say, feeling each other or in agreement with one another. You know, he will help you. And the, being in a marriage that is full of purpose will drive it. Now, there are people that say, well, if my husband cheat on me, I will leave him. I won't be like those women that stay. And I'm like, whoa. Well, then what type of marriage, you know, you don't just leave a person you have committed to. You stay. There are women that I applaud, that I learn from, that have gone through uh, childbearing issues, marriages, and, and, and infidelity, and they still stay with the person. Why? Because their marriage is based on a purpose. And it, if your marriage is based on a purpose and is based on, in, in, you know, you are turning a goal somewhere, it will carry you through through those emotions. I strongly believe, you know, um, because you don't even know how your marriage will be once you get in. Mm -hmm. You may think that kids will be coming here and there, mm -hmm. but you don't know. You don't know if your husband may fall sick. You don't know if one of you will both of you will lose your jobs yeah. you understand anything can happen so you have to have something between you two that can't be taken away and i believe that's the purpose and it, time changes situation mm -hmm. also changes mm -hmm. but i believe that if a marriage is based on a mission a marriage is based on a purpose it will you will carry it through the mission and the purpose of that marriage will carry you through so that's something that I wanted to establish on the importance of being in a purpose-filled marriage, not just marrying somebody because it's time for you to marry and, you know, your age, everybody is having weddings and, um, you know, or to have kids. It, it's, you are a human being and God has placed a spirit in you, uh, has kept, placed something in you for you to fulfill you will require, you will want more. And, you know, there are some that don't. And that's perfectly also fine. But most cases, it is better in a marriage if the marriage is based on purpose. You guys are a goal that God has given you, the Holy Spirit has inspired you with, and you are fulfilling that um, goal. So that's something that I wanted to mm. establish or, like, you know, with being in a marriage that is... Um, based on a mission so um i know that my, in my culture right now submission is just an unpopular word everybody thinks that it's not something that they want to take part of something that they want to do or even be close to but it's not a bad word it's not a bad word it it just means that you submit to the mission the man who spearheads mm -hmm. the vision of your marriage the purpose of your marriage yeah. and once you guys communicate you utilizes your best qualities in the marriage then you know i i don't go home and feel the need to bow if i want to bow down to my husband i will and i do i serve him i you know i talk to him i rub his feet i'll do all that but i do that out of love not out of any uh, coercion, coercion or any, force. like I have to cook or you have to mm. clean. Mm. I do that because I want him to come home and eat him because I know he's gone outside to fulfill his part and I want to do my part to make sure that we are, and then he also makes sure that because I'm home doing, I'm not also in need of anything. So mm. it's a mission. It's not even terrible to stay at home. I know so many of you wants to work, and that's great. But I don't feel less of a person. In fact, sometimes I come to the office, and I just want to go home simply because there's so much I have to do with my kids, you know. And I'm a very career 
oriented person i did two majors so it's not that but things may change it's not always that what you will dream it will be especially when kids life, come in life is real and <laughs> sometimes when and when when you are getting into marriage sometimes you don't you are so much in love to nobody you don't hear anything all you want to do is get through the word and then right. and that's it but life is real mm-hmm. if you're watching me i want to tell you this <laughs> life is real um I, I like to i like to people to to see life as it is because what you see today may not be there today nothing in life is permanent the person that you see in life that you love so much she's so beautiful or oh, you see her she smiles and something happens to you that person 20 years 30 years from now will not be that same person mm. the way she walks will change the way she talks will change her teeth she may even lose some of her teeth <laughs> you know she may lose some of, she will have kids and her body will give up you know mm-hmm. man mm-hmm. the person that you love so much his hair is all wavy and you see him going to rub his feet his face and rub your hands through his hair that hair will go bald yeah, that are... is life so if you marry because of looks looks you marry because of things you see you marry because of those things will eventually go away there has to be something that really binds you guys together that is stronger than looks that is stronger than than what you feel because life is real the person may have a heart attack may not recover we may recover may not be the same person that he used to be you may you may have to to feed him you may have to get get him up of bed every morning you have, may have to wipe him you may have to help him go to the bathroom mm-hmm. that person you love and you met that, that he was the the the, the your, your your king and the and the and the prince in his night shining uh, uh, shining armor who was going to save you may not be the same person mm. what do you do at that time mm. those are the things you have to think 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 the worst that could ever happen in the relationship and if you will want to be with and if you still will want to stay in that relationship because life is real and life happens sometimes life happens for the good sometimes it happens for the bad and when you are marrying a person you are committing your life to this person for good and for bad and you have to be ready to go in all marriage is not a 50/50 thing it's 100% you commit yourself 100% to that marriage you give yourself to to it and i believe if two people are giving themselves to something there is nothing that can even separate them mm-hmm. there is something about unity that it even threatens god the bible says that the people of in, in 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 genesis talk mm-hmm. about building the uh, the tower of tower babel, babel. Yeah. god god came down and saw the people he said that they were so united they were speaking one language they and for that reason they could do anything god was even threatened mm-hmm. Beloved, if you can go into marriage with that understanding, with that woman, with that man, mm-hmm. and you say what? You know what? I am going to lay aside my mission. I'm going to lay aside and we can both merge our missions or have one mission that we believe will work and work with that mission. Beloved, the sky will be your limit. Mm-hmm. There is nothing that you cannot do. There is no mountain that you cannot climb. There is no valley that you cannot go through. There is no bitter water or bitter thing that is said to you that you guys cannot endure. Right. It's very true. The reason why most marriages are not able to survive is people are coming in with 50%. Okay, I'm going to give keep one feet in the marriage and the other feet <laughs> outside just in case, case in just <laughs> just in case something bad happens and we see that especially in 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 in, mm. in marriages here in the just people that are immigrant most immigrant marriages and because of that reason because the person has put one feet here and another feet just in case something goes and a marriage that you go in thinking just in case something happens that would definitely be at a, a, a point in that marriage where something will definitely go wrong mm-hmm. and if you go in with that mindset that marriage is bound to fail yeah. i wanted to read where you mentioned which was uh, genesis 11 you said but the lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building 
the Lord said, if one, if as one people speak in the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they do will be impossible for them. So the part that I want us to pay attention to is, it says, if as one people speak in the same language. Now, as builders, there is somebody that is actually probably doing the construction. There's one that is probably just fetching water. water right. There's one that is probably just making sure that there's food there for the people when they're out there building, they can come down to eat. Correct. The Bible sees them as one people. Mm -hmm. No one is higher than the other, you know? And he says, if one people speak in the same language, and I think I thank God for giving that inspiration to my husband for him to bring that up. But as one people speaking the same language, as one people connecting and 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 doing, and not all of them were the same. Right. Not all of them were the same. I'm going to bring that up, but not all of them were the same. We have to understand that that if they're building. It was probably let's say a thousand people, three hundred people. Mm -hmm. That everybody has a part that they are playing. Correct. Somebody is probably fetching water. Somebody is making sure that the people that are up there, if it's sunny, they will just probably go sprinkle water on them. Mm -hmm. But and the Lord, all the, uh, whatever everybody is doing was important. It's important. Nothing and, mm -hmm. is less than the other. Right. Every single thing there that was happening was very much important. And I think it's the same that same concept mm -hmm. applies to marriage. Yeah. That when Paul says submit to your wife, in in everything you have to submit. I heard Bernard Adams, Reverend Bernard Adams say, in this life you're going to be a fool for someone. You you have to be you you can't and you need help. God has made us human beings in a way that we need to interdependent on one another. So we need each other. And so there's nothing wrong to submit. As a wife, I don't see anything wrong with it. Um, I thank God that God, the Holy Spirit gave Paul that inspiration to give us that command to submit to our husbands. You understand? Because if he's a carrier and the spearhead of that vision, and how you see that person? Because when you marry, you take upon his name. You, he doesn't take your name. I know now there are some marriages out there that are men are probably, the women are, men are probably taking the women's name. Yeah, yeah. But that don't even also mean anything. If they have an understanding and they're going somewhere, their mission, it will be fulfilled. Their purpose will be fulfilled. Right. You know, if they are one, as one people speaking the same language, doing things, to, you know, and the Bible says, if if we if they will they he says if one people are, are building mm -hmm. but the lord came down to see and said begin to do this then nothing can stop them mm -hmm. nothing not trials not tribulations nothing will stop you so um that's what we wanted to um discuss today right um and um so we much. thank you very much for joining yeah. us um our brother um, a man of God, uh, the revivalist, uh, prophetic revivalist, um, Pastor Pastor Odede Parker. Uh, mm -hmm. God richly bless you, Pastor Mike in London. Um, we thank you very much, our sister uh, Millicent, for joining my us. Sister. Yeah, your, your brother. Wife. Yes, my 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 sister-in-law. <laughs> yeah, my sister-in-law Millicent for joining <laughs> us today. Um, uh, brother Asamoah from Maryland. Um, uh, I call David Kwanza. I call David. Yeah, Papa Sly. Thank you very much for joining us. And yes, and I would like to talk about this briefly. Just, just by the way, um, Columbus, Ohio. Uh, we have great news. Yeah. One hundred two point one FM. One hundred two point one FM. Uh, we're doing a test test transmission. Uh, from we three, we, yeah, we have acquired 102.1 FM station, FM station uh, Sky FM 102.1. Uh, we're running um, a test transmission, a 12-hour a day test transmission from from 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. each day. Uh, very soon we'll be going 24 hours, God willing, and um, I believe that will be a blessing to the community here. Um, I thank God uh, for Brother Kwame Entry. Thank you very much for joining us today. 
um, uh, Elder, Elder Bismarck, Sumwa, God Richard bless you for joining us and every single one of you there. Um, if you have any questions, we have a few yeah. minutes here. If there's any question that you have, um, you can also inbox them. You can so inbox them directly to us. And give me time um, to study. We can also um, can, can get back to you. Um, God, which you bless every single one of you. Um, do you have anything to say, honey? Uh, no, just uh, we hope we've, we've been a blessing to you. Um, brought enlightenment into whatever um, your perception of marriage is. We hope that at the end of this um, uh, segment that you see your marriage differently for the better. And if maybe there are things that needs fixing, um, you will begin to ask the Holy Spirit to help you to fix them. And um, this, I mean, I know we have, my husband, uh, he has friends everywhere um, that um, that are atheists, that are Christians, that are... But I will encourage you that marriage whereby the Holy Spirit is the one that is in, uh, leading you, advising you, it's, it's the best of the best. You can get it. The Holy Spirit is a personality that I would like to introduce to you that if you are a Christian and you are married and you believe in God, that the Holy Spirit he is our counselor. Mm -hmm. He will teach you in all things. He is the first person to go to. Most of the time we seek advice on marriages from humans. And that's great. I have elder, older women that I get advice from. My, so from my mate, Tricia Kote, uh, my mama, Linda, mama, um, Maggie, Apia, mm -hmm. um, my own mother, uh, Selena. I get advice from them. But there's nobody like the Holy Spirit who will advise you, who will give you, who will tell you as it is. Because even some of these people, when you go to them, you don't really tell them the whole truth, in all honesty. But the Holy Spirit is there, you know, to help you, you know. And he, so I would like to introduce, if there's anybody here going through, and we're going to pray, mm -hmm. but if there's anybody here going through anything, he is the one. I will recommend to you the Holy Spirit. Then, of course, maybe a marriage counselor um, mm -hmm. to help you. So that's all I wanted to say. Um, yeah, thank you very much yeah, again for, for joining. Um, yeah, we would like to pray for Seriously. everyone. Say a word of prayer for everyone out there um, that is um, planning on getting married yeah, or yeah. into in, yeah, already in marriage. And I, I believe, I believe um, in this end time, uh, the devil's the devil is after marriages. He wants to destroy the the very 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 first institution that God instituted. Yeah. Um, I know our marriages are under attack, and they want to make marriage want to make marriage less pleasant, right? Because of what we see, what we hear happen in marriages, but. There is no marriage that is perfect. Yes. There is not going to be a marriage out there that is going to be perfect. Yes. But the most important thing is, is this marriage able to stand the test of time? If the marriage is able to stand the test of time, that is the most important to me. There will be challenges in life, just like life, just like anything. There right. will be hard times. There will be times that will be great. There will be times that will be in the low. But in all, in all, remember this, that you being separated, it's never better than you being being together. Um, no matter what, no matter what, do not do not break the, that cord. Keep that bond of love. Keep that bond of unity. Keep that marriage together. And um, it is sometimes the benefits transcend us. It trans is good for your kids. It's good for their upbringing. Mm -hmm. It's good for generation yet unborn. Mm -hmm. And that's why God said, "I hate marriages because, because I hate divorce." Sorry, I take that back. I mm -hmm. hate divorce because when divorce comes in, uh, it opens the door for the for so many things for the for against the kids, and it, it, mm -hmm. it's no one no one wins in a divorce. Mm -hmm. Nobody wins. And I uh, would like to share a word of prayer uh, before we leave, um, that the Lord God will strengthen marriages out there. Um, His grace will come upon everybody that is out there seeking, them that are seeking to Including marry. Ours. <laughs> them that are seeking to marry, we want to pray that God will also um, help them 
um, and, and let them have trust mm. and, and, and confidence in that in that institution. Mm. I'd like you to pray with yeah. us. Okay. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Uh, we know that this is the day that you have ordained, and so we'll be glad and rejoice in it. We know that this is not done by our strength nor by our might, but it is by your spirit alone. Holy Spirit, we thank you for even giving us the wisdom, the insight, giving us something to share. Um, we don't declare ourselves as perfect, nor do we declare our marriage as perfect. We are learning as we go, and we are just sharing some of the things that you have given us. We pray that whatever we have shared today, that it will go across the board to each and everyone that needs this message, that needs to have another perspective on what it means to submit. We pray in the name of Jesus that this word that we have shared will bring healing, that these teachings will edify the soul, will edify the body, that it will affect the husband, the wife, and the children, and generation to come. We come against the works of the evil one. We pray, O oh God, that and we, 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 we block the devil from using our segment as, as a tool to use against marriages or to, to, to plant evil seed in people's minds in Jesus' name. We pray that your perfect will will be done from this henceforth. We have done what you wanted us to do, which is share the word, and we leave the rest up to you, Holy Spirit. We pray that you will take absolute control and do your work with it. We bless you in Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. I don't want to end this telecast without telling anyone if you need to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, uh, please, do you want to do the... Yes, if there's <laughs> anybody out there that is watching us for this time and, and for one reason or the other, um, you believe that there is more to life than this. Uh, you are that place in your life and you believe that there is more to life than this. There is more that you can receive actually out of life. There is somebody that can help you fulfill your life mission and also help you to re redirect your mission and your purpose. Um, you made mention of when we were talking about submission, a mission and a purpose. Everybody born here on earth had a purpose and a mission in life. Mm -hmm. And some way, one way or the other, we get swayed, we get distracted, we get... And for one reason, or maybe you had started something that did not work. Um, I have someone that I'd like to recommend onto you. Uh, he is able to save and he is able to restore destinies. He is deliver. able to deliver you from whatever that you found yourself in. Uh, his name is Jesus. Um, he is alive. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to be your helper. He wants to be your friend and your confidant. Uh, if you're watching me right now, I'll present him to you. He is ready to come and help you with your work, your work here on earth. Um, if wherever you are, if you want to pray this prayer with me, accept him as your Lord and personal Savior. He will support you. Your life will not be the same. Hallelujah. Um, say the prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I thank you. Thank you. For dying for me. For dying for I receive me. you as my Lord and personal Savior. I receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. I receive Savior. you as my helper. I receive you as my helper. I receive you as my friend. I receive you as my friend. Help me. Help me. Strengthen me. Strengthen me. Empower me. Empower to me. lead my life here on earth. To lead my life and also earth. save my life for eternity. To save my life for eternity. In the name of Jesus we pray. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Beloved, thank you very much. God richly bless every single one of you until we come to you once again. Uh, on Wednesday, um, Wednesday morning, uh, it's me, your brother Ernesto yeah. Pony, with <laughs> no. my better half. Not Wednesday mornings. <laughs> what? I have so much. No. Uh, we'll, be, we'll make it work. Wednesday oh, morning, no. I'll, be here. I'll be here Wednesday morning. He'll be here um, Wednesday morning. But uh, she, uh, I'll be here Wednesday morning. Um, See you, God richly bless every single one of you. And this is my wife, of course, your opening. I love her so much. Uh, she's my better half, and uh, we hope to see her here very soon. God bless you. Yeah. That's it all. Oh, gosh. Is it done? No. Are we done? <laughs>